Good morning, dear listeners. Welcome to another show, the second of this um, seemingly long weekend. Uh, it's not long since I said I'm going to pack up my microphone for the summertime, put it away and start to think about cricket and the garden and stuff of that kind. And here we are now, two podcasts into the dramatic news of uh, yesterday's managerial decapitation at the den. I've never known anything quite like it in all my time, listeners. Joining me to chew over the cud, um, following our show yesterday with Neil Fisher, but today brought in Harry Warren. How are you doing, H? I'm all right. I've, uh, it's, it's not the biggest news this weekend. It's the fucking corruption of the fans game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's another thing, isn't it? <laughs> there was a fans game lined up for, is it next Friday night? It was due to next be, right? Fri- next Friday night, yeah. And now there's a clash with an under-21s fixture, which is a very Millwall um, thing to do, to have a game lined up with the fans who are uh, were due to play at the Den on Friday night, and now suddenly the, it's been superseded by the under-21s fixture, um, an end-of-season game for the under twenty one side. Um, where's that? Has that been rearranged now, Harry? Where's, where's, yeah, where's so the... The under, it's the under-35s game. There's two games run by Phil Clark, who we all must mm. bow down to for mm. arranging Millwall mm. fans into any resemblance of order. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so they've managed to get a rearranged fixture for for the Saturday night. I can't play in it, um, unfortunately. Right. So I've had to be. I I think four other lads can't can't make it. So we've been arranged in as ringers into the the over forties game. So I feel like I might actually get away with, get away from someone for ten your, minutes. Your, your youthful right. pace will come into its own in that in that yeah, picture. Yeah, absolutely, my I'd like the fucking bouncing bouncing ball, Benny the ball out of fucking <laughs> top cat. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad something's got worked out that's maybe not as good as you wanted originally. But at least you get to play on the den turf. So um, yeah, that was just a side issue. I haven't even mentioned that one, listeners. But there we are. Um, Harry, we speak, of course, in the wake of yesterday's astounding, really, um, news that club uh, chief executive Steve Cavanagh has departed with immediate effect, as have. Uh, director of football Alex Aldrich, um, much mentioned online, of course, Alex, and less mentioned, but a nice bloke, and a, you know, I, I consider uh, Billy a, uh, a friend. Um, Billy Taylor has also um, felt the, the edge of the axe, a three-way decapitation of the senior management of of our football club, listeners. Um, Harry, we've been talking off air, and I must admit. Um, as we said on our WhatsApp group, this this feels a very un-Millwall situation. It's it's ruthless, but it doesn't feel very Millwall. I mean, I've, I've had a day to think about this, and I must admit, I feel a bit unsettled by the whole thing. How do you how do you stand on it? I feel quite worried. We don't do change very well. <laughs> it's been proven no. last season. <laughs> no, so just. Just after getting sort of some kind of settled base, we've decided to <laughs> decided to go back to, back twelve months. Um, back to chaos. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I get you know the Cav Cav's never been popular, right? Let's let's you know let's get the elephant out of the room. Um, Cav's never been popular, you know. From I don't I don't really know why. I mean, a lot of a lot of it is like sort of Twitter. Sort of house of fun bollocks as well, yeah, like yeah, West Ham yeah, cunt, yeah. you know, yeah, would be yeah, the would yeah, be the throwaway is, line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but there's lots of them knocking around. Like Max is West Ham supporter, just for anyone who needs to know. Um, so so <laughs> there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of it knocking it back. It's it's just you know there are you, you can separate in football if we only run this. You know, how far do you want to take that? If we've got like. The best, you know, players wise, if you've got the best player in the fucking world want to play for Millwall, but he supports Arsenal, we're going to go no because he supports Arsenal. It is a little bit childish, for lack of a better word, you know. Well, absolutely, um, absolutely, yeah. So, so taking that apart, you know, has Cav done anything that I think is particularly bad? No. Like this idea that we've got, someone's got to pay for, for, um, for the appointment or for last season, for the appointment of Joe Edwards and and Gary Rowett and the capitulation of last season. Um, I don't know whether or not, you know, it's it's always like these inquiries. You know, we've all watched the post office documentary. Mm, I'm an avid viewer of it, just to watch it all unfold, you know. So there is a a part of, you never really get the truth. Do you understand? You You get a version of the truth. So I don't think we'll ever know what went on between, you know, August last year and, and and May this year really behind the scenes. So 
we're, we're not we're not privy to or most of us are not privy there will be some people who are privy to this and sit here and laugh because we're we we sort of operate in the shadows and the dark yeah but, in the blind but, yeah. Yeah. yeah so so i for me i don't think i also think that cav done what's the way recently i I'd, I'd swapped on cav to being sort of i found him like a beige boring man to mm. um to being quite impressed with the way that he reacted to the fa cup shit so i yeah, was, was, I was un- kind unusually of... decisive comment harry wasn't it and i think that's one thing i would say in- interrupting if i may um Millwall fans love a decisive comment. <laughs> Whether you agree with it or not, they they want they want to hear something they can react to. And you know, not everyone will agree with you. Not everyone will support you. But on that particular issue, I thought we came over very very well. And I thought it was, that was a welcome, um, you know, turn of the steering wheel, so to speak. Absolutely, and I think we're um, you know, I think it's a bit like on here. We have you you do the voicemail shows. Hmm. And you get a wide ranging opinion, and I'll sit there listening, and I think, what the fuck is this cunt on about? Yeah. You know, and they don't watch the same game as me, or they don't have the same view as me. Um, and I don't think that was, I think that was summed up so much after Rowett left in the sense of how disconnected we are. And I do think it, it, it plays into the upper reaches of the club. It's like, what are we doing here? You know, hmm. what is the aim? Because for me, my aim is I want us to be a Premier League club. Right, that's my aim. That is what I want. I want my eighty-eight. I want my eighty-nine. Right, I I want that. Right, and for the me. top flight. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I want it. I don't care if it's two seasons of one season of staying up and the second season of getting drubbed five-one every week or whatever. I I don't really care because I know that that one season will make sure that when I have kids, my kids will see Millwall Football Club. The financial rewards are enough. Whether or not it would still be pie mash, jelly deals, and fucking whatever. But you know the group on mm. stand looms opposite me, like as as a as a marker to the future, and this nine hundred ninety nine year lease with this lovely toilet bowl type den that like, hasn't got bird shit in the corner, and all all these visionary things. I think this is all part of the modernisation. Now, if Millwall are looking to get someone with a redevelopment lead type idea. That's fine, but most of those at their clubs, I'm thinking Levy at Spurs, are fucking universally hated by their fan base. You know, mm. Ed, um, who was the guy that was at Man United that they got rid Ed, of? That didn't um, be... Ed Woodward, was it? Ed Woodward? Ed Woodward, that's it, right. So, like, all these people that have done their changes, seemingly, I don't think any chief exec is really looked at with any kind of liking. Do you, do you understand what I mean? It's a very difficult well, role. No, no, Whenever no, they no. do anything that involves fucking fans off, it just is very easy to do. No, you know? no no, kid, when they fall in love with football, Harry, has a sticker of Panini stickers featuring chief executives of their football club, nor the, the, the money men that sit behind every football club. Now, you want the stars of the game. That's that's what you fall in love with. And, you know, it's been it's been a rocky season, that's for sure. Um, now, who, who was behind various decisions along the way we you've 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 nailed it I, I i don't think any of us will ever know um obviously at the top of the pile is is the berylson family james berylson now son of john and um it's his money in the end that pays for the um the roller coaster and um it's also therefore it's, it's his football to kick wherever he in which any direction he wants to take it so this decision is james berylson's decision now uh, sack uh, steve kavanagh as you say, very difficult job being a CEO of a football club. Very, very difficult job, listeners, if you want to ever try it, being a CEO of Millwall Football Club because you're you're riding a tiger and with pressures on you from di- different directions, from what you might call authority on one side, Harry, and then the pressure of the of the fans, you know, the the, the, the websites you've mentioned already. So, you know, that's not not an easy job. I I actually think. Um, and I don't hold any brief for Steve Cavan. I, 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 I've dealt with him and I've, I've, I've had a dig at him about bird shit, which always struck me as the most minor thing to be moaning about. But it's a real thing, you know, and it's a very simple solution. Really trying not to laugh at the well, fact that a multi-million pound football club, a multi-million pound <laughs> industry... Can't clean bird shit up. Can't still, bird it's still, shit it's still, uh, but I, But I generally now believe that that, should, that seat that's covered in bird shit should have a plaque on it well, I was, and it should, I was going to suggest the Millwall like, Museum like, Harry at, like the memorial yes. chair <laughs> like just when you a go brass the... plaque on it here here sits the memory of Steve Kavanagh CEO 
uh, and you put it there and you just like, leave it for all time. You go to the football museum, they got like, the, the the seat from the original Wembley on the, on the 1923 picture, you know, stuff like that. I thought that might make a good memorial. Um, but I mean, also being serious, I'm, we're, we're veering off into the humour, but I, I do feel sorry for anyone, Harry, that loses their job. I, I've never, ever felt comfortable. Apart from football of... managers. Yeah, they don't but, really lose their job because no, they get paid they, up to the end. They're the only people that get paid to foul. Yeah, and they're, they're cushioned from reality because the money is, that sloshes around the game makes it a slightly different. Well, some, football managers, sorry. some football managers, I feel sorry. Some football managers, I feel sorry. You know, I, I, I feel, not I feel, like Holloway and Lomas; they can no, fuck off. But no, I there's feel, other people. I feel for I feel for the likes of Billy and Alex and and and, and Steve Kavanagh, to be honest with you. Yeah, I feel. I, I, feel I, I think Alex, and I'll be honest, and I'm not. I'm not. I'm. I'm here to be shot at because I'm still here at the club. Yeah. But I think Alex gets a lot of shit that is completely un, unrewarded. And I, 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 I can give you. I can't tell you how transfers in the men's game work. I can only tell you how difficult it is. I've only dealt with one women's transfer that has come with money. So I can mm. only explain to you how difficult that is to get across the line. Now, I'm obviously, we're talking chalk and cheese, but the levels of intricacy and the timing and the paperwork and all that kind of shit, let alone the identifying the player is the easy yeah. part of this, it's right? And I, deal, I must think, right, I expect, and, and, and you know, I don't know if I'm teaching people to suck eggs. I, I don't know. But the idea that you lot all watch fucking League One football, so i.e. the playoffs, and you've all watched the playoffs and watched Peterborough play Oxford and uh, Barnsley play Bolton, and you've looked at the two teams that are not in the playoffs, and you now think you can go and look at, you know, for instance, Peterborough, their oldest outfield player was 26, right, in, yeah. in their in their defeat, right? So you'll look at you'll look at their the, the um, you'll look at their players, and you, you'll look and say you identify that a fucking a ball playing centre back, for instance, that we cry out for. And you'll go, right, so you as a scout or whatever will know that person's agent or you'll know that person. That is what, that is all networking. It is all networking to go, well, you know how they say, oh, yeah, well, this player mm. um, has agreed a deal. That deal's already been agreed three days before Sky know about it. That That's already been talked about. This is the kind of cloak and dagger world that directors of football and scouts and agents and all this bollocks is, is a wide world. There's a whole industry into, into this. And I think we're only we're little Millwall. And I, it's not a small Millwall mentality. It's a realistic Millwall mentality. I would like us to get better at it, but I don't know if cutting seemingly the only man that deals with it is head off. Now, I don't know how many scouts and I don't know how many um, how many people we have in that department. For, for all I know, Millwall might have, it might be Aldo and a fucking clipboard. But mm. I don't know. Do you know? I, does no, any I fan know? You know, exactly, know. It's, it's, right? it's, it's a hidden world from the average fan, average supporter. It's certainly hidden from me. I, I don't claim to be in the know at all, listeners. But um, I, I'm struck... With just going back to Kavanaugh for a moment, if we may, Harry, and I, I, I agree with everything you're saying. I think there's also a case, and it can be a bit of a, um, a, a double-edged thing, but there's a case in, in football, and we've seen it probably this season, for there's no substitute for experience. And, you know, whatever people might think of Steve Kavanaugh and his, 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 his um, clubs, he's, you know, he was involved at South End, and I think um, uh, Charlton, and, and, uh, and now obviously with the Lions. He's a very experienced man in that role. And there's actually no substitute for, as you've just described it, you've described it very well about the intricacies of the game. Experience is invaluable in that situation. Um, I mean, Billy has been with us for a long while, so he's, he's, he's you know he's, he's very much part of the Mill scene. He's, he's now gone, and Alex also was a, both a fan and then um, you know director of football. So we've actually cut yeah. off quite a bit of experience there. Which I, I, you know, is is easily easily done in 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 the world, listeners. But it's hard to replace it. In my, absolutely, in my, in, in my 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 experience, anyway. Yeah, absolutely. And for the people that are riding roughshod over Twitter, like praising the second coming of Christ and uh, and you know, <laughs> raving to the lunatics, Hallelujah! You are the same people. Most of these people, and I'm not going to call out particular Twitter names. You are the people that come on that fucking show when they reappointed Neil Harris, telling me it was the death of Millwall Football Club and fucking Aldo and um, Aldo and Cav needed to be hung from fucking the CBL. Uh, uh, you know, th th these are the same people. Twitter is not the best barometer 
for no re- that like that rational social media, ideas social media and, we, it's not good <laughs> we, we see it in all walks of life and the football is is probably the best example of politics you social media rewards extreme out there you know big splash kind of comments and that's not the best way to run your life or, or, or your football no. club, particularly. You know, far from it. You want you want balance and calmness. You know, we, t- we take the piss about Millwall's bipolarness, but we kind of live in a bipolar age where, you know, linking back to what you just said about politics, you can't be centrist anymore. We don't really have a party of the centre in the UK, which drives, you know, we don't have centrist media. We either have... You know, GB News, right? Yeah, you're, you're in extremes now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or you're the BBC left wing cuddle club. You know, yeah. it's in, it's it's one or it's one or the other. You don't really have a. You can't have. Well, actually, no, that's not right, and no, that's not right to to both sides. Um, and I feel like Twitter rewards, as you said, the the extremists of both views. I'm of the opinion that realistically, um, in any walk of life. You cannot, I, I, I'm personally one of these people, I learn this as I get older, I don't like change. I, I, I don't like change. The only thing that is, the only thing that is everlasting in life is change. So therefore you are, you are stuck to not, you are, if you don't like change, you're always going to be slightly mm-hmm. unsettled. Um, mm-hmm. But in, I think when you go into work every day, your place of work is the place that if you don't move, you you know, you don't do your job. You know, people who do 50 years at the post office or, or, or fucking, yeah, you know, yeah. old school. That's a very unmodern thing. People move around more now and, and, and get, you know, do 10 years here or five years there and go, you know, I'm not making it. It's kind of a millennial thing. I'm not making an impact anymore. I need to move. Yeah. But there is an idea of change for change's sake is, is sometimes just as dangerous. And I, I do wonder... You know, say what you want. I don't think, and I, I can say this, I don't think Billy, do you, you know, on a day-to-day basis, I don't know what Billy Taylor could have done wrong to, to invite. Very nice um, bloke. Um, absolutely, I mean, love Billy. Whenever, whenever really, really I've had nice a, a thing, and I've seen this other people saying online, Harry, so I'm not alone. Um, you know, very, very helpful. Um, good customer, um, which is crucial at a place like Millwall, the ability to talk to people and, and to deal with them, hopefully, helpfully. I mean, I think that's a, that's another cliche. I mean, obviously, when you read the media, you think that we're all, you know, some separate breed. I mean, Millwall fans are just basically human beings that want to be heard and listened to and have, have their, to some extent, um, their, 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 their issues resolved in a, in a pleasant, helpful way. If you do that, then in some ways, it's one of the easiest places to work. I mean, it's not always possible when you will come across the odd um, lunatic, but... You know, that's that. I think for ninety nine point nine percent of of Mill fans I've ever met, I'd say that's the truth. And Billy was very good at that. So, we've we've lost we've lost some talent and we've lost some experience. I, I can only hope, Harry, that this is a bit a big splash decapitation at the top. You've got to make a big splash in return coming in because nothing is justified if this is just going to be three names we've never heard of. And yeah, um, but do you, you know, know any names? So of- what? You know. Yeah, but do you know any names of any fucking chief executive, any director of football, no, or any no. fucking leader who of chief communication? Who follows that? Who follows that? Exactly. I mean, no one does, so you you know. go, So your statement there, they've got to be big names. Like, what the fuck does that even mean, Nick? Like, I'm not well, trying to it, dig it that, means, but that's the kind of that's the means. kind of shit that I'm reading online. Well, and no, it's like, no, what I mean by that? Right, let me, let me, let me, let me um. Sorry to pull you up. This is the first no, no, time no. this has ever happened. No, no, no. What does it mean? It means that to 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 get rid of the amount of of, of um, Millwall experience, let's let's tie it into that 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 package with, with the three names there. Whatever people think of those individuals and their their track record, everyone's going to have a view. But there's always going to be a certain cartoon element to that. People create images of who the people are. But if you're going to do this, if you're going to if you're going to lop off the top three names in the football club, you must have some idea of bringing some some group of people that are going to improve things because there's no point to doing this unless you're going to take us up a level, take us up a gear, if you want, put it in that those terms. Now, we may not have heard of these incoming people, but you're going to have to, I would expect, whoever comes in to replace these three names, Harry, to evidently, even if you've not heard of them, to say, well, look at the track record of this bloke here. Look where he's come from. Look what he's done. You know, you've got, you can't do this and then just bring in, what? Uh, you know, people, people, uh, people without that don't have some form of um, promise or, or, or track record of any kind. 
Otherwise, there's no point to it. and You're just causing damage for no purpose. Yeah, I, I agree. I totally agree. But then that's why I also don't agree with getting rid of them in the first place. But there, but there we go. Because no, I, I feel, I feel like, for the lack of, for the lack of leadership of Gary Rowett, we'd have been in the playoffs last season, or not last season, season before. This, this is a great um, video. We, we, we circulate the, the leadership of Neil Harris. We're talking about the video from the dressing room and and the. Uh, a speech made at the end of the the Swansea game and and, and the songs and all the rest of it, but the it really stood out the the dis, the, the 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 value of that leadership. I mean, poor old Joe Edwards probably just couldn't have done what Neil's done there because he doesn't have the the Millwall depth. Neil does. It's and not just, just Millwall. The, val, the value of that, you know. It's not just it's not just Millwall depth. I want to call this book. You know, now the season's dead and buried, and you know, there's also other changes going clearly going afoot. Um, let's let's get it right. We the Joe Edwards thing now, with the benefit of hindsight, was a mistake. It was done for the right reasons, and there's a million and one things in human history that have been done for the right reasons that lead, lead to terrible decisions. We, we, you know, you can even look back to the COVID idea with this inquiry that someone must be to blame for decisions. People mm-hmm. act in their best interest when they're under stress and 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 torment, and I think. Realistically, a bit, you know, you can link parallels between fucking. We've lost our chairman, and we're fucking all radless, and we've gone for this young fucking young coach that's come highly recommended, and we we we've just you know seen Ipswich blow us away and blowing the division away, playing lovely football, but yet have forgotten that it took Ipswich four years to put that together in Absolutely. League One. Absolutely. So so you know, the, the, let's let's call it what it was. You've then gone to the right other end of the scale, which was to go back to Millwall Basics, Millwall 101, blood, passion, sweat, tears, mm. 442, mm. fuck everyone, make the den a fortress, nick something away from home. Now, this idea, you know, there's a Barney Rone um, piece in The Guardian today that links back into the CPO and the 999 mm. uh, yeah, the extensions lease. and all the rest of it, yeah. All this great, great stuff. You and uh, you and Mickey got fucking name dropped, so that's the that's the yeah, that's the big one. That, listeners, I'm gonna put it up on the wall. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna put it up in. Where well, you're gonna put it up in your lavatory. <laughs> um, but move, moving swiftly on from that image, yeah, yeah, that there, image there's yeah. there's a there's an idea in there where the people that are running Millwall's regeneration into um into the modern time are Millwall now. Mm. If you're a Millwall fan of a certain certain vintage, and I'm talking at the 18, 19 year olds that seemingly I've been thrown into in this under 35s chat, you don't, you know, you don't have the, and I, I don't, I, but I probably didn't when I was their age, but I was very lucky. I've seen us do very well in the last sort of 20, 25 years. We've yeah, done yeah, yeah. phenomenally, phenomenally well. Um, this might be as good as you ever have it. And the idea, and there's never anything that's more terrifying than letting Millwall have control over something that they can control. Millwall, Millwall having control over anything to me is terrifying, <laughs> and I, I don't know if that's 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 long term. But you you know exactly what I mean. It's like oh, Millwall, yeah, uh, yeah. Millwall can't run a club shop, right? <laughs> They're now going to be expected to do a regeneration of the area around the den, and you know this is this is you know it's taking the you, um, I mean the other, right? the other they can't thing run is... a fucking kiosk. Than at half time, we can't no, clean no, no, shit. No. These are all things we cannot do. But we have now somehow, we, we've now cut our chief executive just two days after the idea that we've been given sort of free reign at Bur- New Bermondsey, as as it's being called, and Biscuit Town, and all yeah, the rest yeah. of it. But you've also got the um the on, the ongoing drag that is this training ground down at Brands Hatch. You know, mm. um that's not happening so far. Uh, now whether that's part of the uh, the reason for uh, Steve Cabinet being at the casualty, I don't know. I mean, we're just not privy to this this information. It is, ma- but... it is massive for the club as well. Like, talking from a purely, um, I can imagine how much revenue that will create as well. Like, looking mm. at, you know, if you look at probably Bromley and, and Sutton in terms of their 4G pitches, how much money they were making before they ended up in the Football League. Yeah. Off that, if Millwall have a... You know, I don't know how many, I can't remember now off the top of me, but I, I, I believe they had like sort of four, five, six pitches over there, which were going to be 3G leveled up and, you know, yeah. the, the training. It's, big, the, it's the, a big project. But I mean, yeah, again, absolutely. That, that seems you know, to be stuck in the mire rather, Harry, at the moment. It doesn't seem to be going anywhere, does it? It was it was briefly um, flickered into life and now it seems to have 
dimmed somewhat. Well, I think know? I think the planning permission's all there. I just think it's cost of materials and so on and so yeah, forth. But money. Yeah. you know, I yeah. also I also think you know the the den thing as well. The reason they've got to regenerate the den is if we get close. I think there was someone done something I saw online, or or, or it's been said before, is that I don't think our med- current facilities are up to the standard for for Premier League. Now we're I've not like that. um yeah. we're not we're not in Luton sort of Ken- if Kenilworth Road can be upgraded, don't worry, I'm sure we can. But fucking you know what I mean it might Yeah, no, it's it probably falls short of every single box that needs to be ticked to be like a proper Premier League side. Um, the filling in I, I, the, the filling in the like you say, I mean, if, 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 if Luton can get up there and survive for a while and even some of the other clubs, I can't believe some of the older school grounds like um the city ground, which is in a fairly central position, you know, I can't believe they tick every single box. But anyway, it's. I think whenever Millwall's name get mentioned in the Premier League, then they bring out every regulation that they, they can find to yeah. try and make it. Um, yeah, yeah, I can't, less, I can't, less plausible. Im- I can't imagine um, the fourteen that get to vote. You know, they need the rule. What's it? The rule of fourteen, where fourteen clubs out of the twenty must vote for it. <laughs> I can't imagine that ever getting passed. If we went to some kind of auto- like some kind of automated <laughs> idea, are Millwall allowed to be promoted? I, I think it'd be a you know, it's the only fools and horses episode with the black balls for Dell. At the Masonic yeah. Lodge. I mean, the other thing, you know, there's an article by Barney Rone doing the rounds. List, as Harry's mentioned it already, and very nice to get mentioned. Of course, it is. But I was always a bit, um, I had a bit of a split kind of opinion, really, Harry, because I, I, we were campaigning to um, obviously to, to save the den. That was fine, and I'm, I'm, I'm up for that. And then for the club to have its rights to develop the area. But I'm quite happy with it all as it is around there. Actually, I quite like the whole kind of derelict, falling to pieces, light industrial car repair shop vibe of the ground is what we are and um i'll be quite sad and sorry the day that that gets built upon with these identical blocks of flats that you see everywhere across across london now so yeah um, a bit of a mixed um mixed opinion but i know it's progress but, but, so you've got, you've but got that's with. that's fine just my kind of thing is that obviously the den's what 30 years old yes, and um yeah. it's already starting to show its age so it is, even if yeah. we do do this identical fucking retail park stadium idea where we've sort of put the cladding that I don't know if you've been through the reception recently. They've sort of updated the reception with this sort of okay, that's yeah. with like a blue backlit mill lion. And it is quite nice. I'm sure yeah. it's, I'm sure it's been done to, you know, a decent standard and maybe that's what we're going to do around the rest of the ground and take all that metal sheeting off, um, which was very 90s chic, which is now looking rather dated, but we're, um, Hmm. I, I kind of like the idea that in thirty years' time that it's just as fucking bad again. It just, <laughs> but this time we won't. There won't be no regeneration. It will just slowly during my lifetime sort of ebb and flow. Rust and and the wooden yeah. the wooden cladding will Slats, all have uh, woodworm in it and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like pin like pin pricks of like old sort of old fucking what are they down on down. You know, you go to the pier and you see all the fucking moss and shit growing <laughs> out of it. But that that sort of sums it up. I I just um. I just, I don't know. I just feel like the club needed stability. And, I, you know, there's got to be a really good fucking reason to, well, this to is what wipe I'm, away. I'm hanging on the reason, Harry. I think that's probably what I wanted to say when we spoke this morning, mate. Um, we re- remains to be seen. I just want to send before uh, this, this section closes, I want to say... Um, best wishes to uh, well to Steve Cavanagh to Billy um, Billy uh, Taylor and, and Alex Aldrich. You know I don't like to see anyone ever lose their job. I know that football's a different world, but they ain't very nice. Um, so yeah, and we've got some voicemails to come now after the break, listeners. So do carry on listening. I want to say a big thank you to Harry taking time out of his Saturday morning for for joining me, mate. Thank you. <laughs> no worries. I. Uh... I'm sure we'll. I'm sure we'll be back again because this is Millwall, and you Where's can't Millwall? have a summer. You can't have a summer time off, Nick. No more shows. It seems not. It seems not. I mean, you know, this is two shows in two days now, and um, we've still got the incoming. Whenever they replace the uh, the, the, the axe three, whenever whenever they bring in now, we've got to talk about that because there'll be almost certain to be reaction to that. But anyway, we'll save that up for another day. Yeah, uh, the one is imagine. Imagine what it's going to be like when we sign someone, ladies oh, and gentlemen. Mate. Imagine fucking hell. We haven't, right. we haven't even, we haven't even got to the end, middle of May. The playoffs a, um, haven't even been yet. There was a, there was a, a, a reaction on the YouTube comments because obviously these these shows go on YouTube. They, they just flicks over through the the website that I they post it on, 
And um, one, one guy said to me, you've got to carry on doing podcasts. You've got to carry on doing podcasts. It's a long while till August. <laughs> it's like, I, I, this feels like you're on some kind of, um, you know, uh, like like uh, a, a kind of a, a treadmill or something where you've got to keep turning this stuff out. But it seems like we're going to be not short of material, Harry. So well, I, I, think, I think it's, we will be back. I think- I think it's that people want like something. They're quite nice when you go like for a walk or you you go to the gym or, or something like that. They because as you've said before, people seem to people think they know you. And um, I've had it a couple of yeah. times this season where people sort of mill out of the den and say hello, and you yeah. don't know who the fuck they are, but they know who you are, which is terrifying. You know, any it time is. it's any a very Millwall weird fan, feeling, listeners. I tell any, you that much. <laughs> any time a Millwall fan mills up to you from out of a crowd, you get <laughs> I get images. Of, of you know that Tottenham clip <laughs> where the <laughs> bosh right move on I don't you agree can't. with your fucking you comment <laughs> yeah, exactly right that, that's what you expect to happen but it, yeah. it didn't you know but um, no it's very but, that, but that's what uh, but yeah so so my point is is that you know this is why people feel they need to to continue to listen to they your, want, they, to your well, there's, there's no there's no escape um, do keep the comments coming listeners send them voice notes always welcome whenever any events um happen along the way um, we will be carrying on I, I can't see me i might i put the uh, microphone away yesterday as i said on the on the um, fizzy show and i've got it out again now so it's gonna have to probably just sit there and uh, ready to go whenever we have any more news did Harry, F- can i ask i haven't listened to it yet uh, did fizz apologize for the uh, death of Millwall football club <laughs> <laughs> not in so many words <laughs> no <laughs> i've seen this uh, by the way i've seen the second coming of christ and his name is neil harris <laughs> That's a good moment to end it. Big thank you, Harry. Harry Warren. Hello. I think I referred in that conversation with Harry listeners about when the incoming replacements arrive. We've already got one, of course. I've missed this out from our conversation. Apologies. Apologies. Um, Steve Gallon is, of course, the replacement director of football for Alex Aldrich, who's departed. Um, mixed comment online that you're always going to get. Um, I'm just looking at Steve Gallon's um, you know, Wikipedia page. Um, employed all, for almost uh, 20 years at QPR as a coach. Um, played for, uh, they went to Hong Kong, a club called Pegasus. Um, managed out there. And then Charlton's head of, head of recruitment. He's also worked with, um, whisper the name, Lee Bowyer at the, in the Montserrat national team. And was announced on the tenth of May as the new director of football at Millwall. Um, so yeah, QPR, Charlton, um, with some some youth kind of um, uh, trophies to his name. Just seeing here the FA Alliance Youth Cup in 20, 2009 to ten. Um, so you know, um, although some people are saying they're underwhelmed by the appointment, um, it remains to be seen. But I, I think that's going to be. He certainly doesn't look like a, a a dud. Let's put it that way. Obviously. Truth, uh, the proof of any pudding is in the eating. So, Steve Gallon, welcome to Millwall Football Club, and he's now the new Alex Aldrich. So, um, well, remains to be seen. As for the other two roles, Billy was uh, Chief Operating Officer, Billy Taylor, and Steve Kavanagh was uh, Chief Executive or whatever fancy title went with that, but Chief Exec in all practical terms. We await. So, um, let's see. Now, then, as I've said already, incidentally, if you keep hearing a dog barking on my shows, it's because there's a dog over the back that yaps all day. Um, apologies, I can't really do much about it. I don't have a soundproofed um, dungeon or anything of that kind. So apologies if you can hear a yapping dog in the background. I've nothing much I can do about it, dear listeners. Um, so as I've said already to Harry, this is a mini voicemail section now, part two of the show. We've got a few voicemails here. I'm going to do them in alphabetical order. Big thank you to... Um, all the boys. We're going to start off alphabetically speaking with Lawrence Binney. Let's have a listen to what Lawrence has got to say. All right, Nick. It's Lawrence Binney here, calling from a sunny climb to Walthamstow. Uh, not quite as glamorous as um, Chicago, Australia, or indeed Chinatown, which is where I believe I was the last time I called in. Um, but you know it will do. West Ham supporting area. Uh, but everyone is a glory supporter anyway, so they'll support fucking Arsenal, Spurs. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, so Alex Aldridge, Steve Kavanagh, out the door, um, summarily dismissed, executed, uh, buried in, a, in an unmarked grave, um, ruthless from the club, if I'm honest, um, especially with Steve Kavanagh, I think, uh, who 
was so forward facing and I think spoke so eloquently and profoundly after the death of John. In fact, I believe he was the last person to talk to John alive. Um, and as Barney Rone pointed out on Twitter, um, on Wednesday, he's, uh, he's, he's the, uh, the public facing figure who's delivering a, sta- delivering a statement about the redevelopment and the agreement with the council. And two days later, he's out the door. Um, but football is a cutthroat business and I really uh, I really respect um, what's, what's the term that we use on the show the cojones the cojones of uh, James Berylson who I think is uh, already marking himself out to be a much more ruthless operator than his father who I believe probably would have stuck with Steve and, and Alex but I mean that's pure speculation who knows um yeah, I mean, I've, I've got two conflicting thoughts on this. Um, the first is, um, I think it shows great vision and foresight um, on James's part, um, James and the other investors of the board members. Um, I think purely because they can sort of see, quite rightly, that we have stagnated. Um, and some people might say, well, stagnation is... Uh, Stagnation is a sort of a, is 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 a, a somewhat of a value free judgment, isn't it? Like to stagnate in League One is different from stagnating in the Championship. Stagnation in the Championship for us is actually something of a historical success because we tend to operate in five year cycles, and yet we are, I believe, coming up to our seventh or eighth season at this level. Um, so yeah, by any measure, that's a success. Um, but at the same time. You know, the world is changing. Our gates are increasing. We do look like we we do look probably more like a championship club now than a than a League One club in both infrastructure and support. I would say. Um, so the next logical step is to to kind of be moving forward and to be consistently challenging for for promotion. And um, and we've not really made that final step really under under the stewardship of Steve or Alex um, uh, both in off the field or on the field matters um, so yeah um, I think looking back over the last season uh, I think I you know we've all been sort of seeing it for years that we've been stuck in a, a mill type mentality for better or for worse which is you know kind of um you know, make things uh, make things ferocious for the opposition off the pitch and on the pitch, and and sort of try and get by on this sort of like passion and grit. It doesn't really cut it in the in the modern day. Um, and I think uh, I think the death now, or funnily enough, for for both of them, was probably the appointment of Neil Harris, which was a once a masterstroke, but also an admission that there aren't really any new ideas going on here with with either of them. Um, no way of sort of uh, no way of sort of kind of uh, moving forward without going backwards um, so yeah so they're one of, one of the best decisions they've made in recent years I think has ultimately been their undoing and I think James has seen that and uh, and he, he's got he's got a project here now that he knows um, that he knows you know that he knows like basically could be could be a lot bigger could be um uh, could be could be something that could be sustainable maybe in the Premier League or at the top end of the Championship, um, especially with the redevelopment. And he's uh, he's acted accordingly. He's been quite positive thinking and progressive. For me, that's um, it's something of a it's, a it's a it's a bit of a monkey claw wish thing, isn't it? Like you know, you think about the Simpsons. Like um, Jaime gets that monkey claw, and uh, it grants him five wishes, but every time he makes a wish he gets what he wants but maybe not in the form that he expected it so you think well we can uh, we can progress on and off the field maybe we you know maybe you sort of make make most of the kind of commercial and residential developments get more fans in expand the stadium become a much more attractive football team on the pitch get to the Premier League but what does that do to our identity I mean fucking hell I mean it's been bad enough with just an influx of a few thousand more tourists over the past few years, people are losing their fucking minds over it. And what's going to be like if we have 30, 35,000 supporters um, 
that sound like talking or even sound a bit like me, you know. <laughs> um, coming into the den every week. Um, at what point do people start moaning about people standing up and not being in the right seat or all the rest of it? I mean, yeah, I don't want to become another Charlton or Palace, but I suppose the... Uh, the obverse here, the other side of the coin is you don't want us to become a, a Berry or a Macclesfield or a Rochdale. You know, I know they're uh, we're separated by several hundred miles from those teams, but you know, those clubs are in a quite a similar circumstance to us. Well, maybe if you're looking closer to home, Leighton Orient, you know, a club that can't expand um, is surrounded by much bigger clubs in an urban environment. You know, like if you stand still, you get lost. So, fuck knows. I mean, I'm sure I'll be complaining in 10 to 15 years, but at the moment, it seems like a positive move. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. And let's hope this is more of a genie lamp situation than a monkey claw situation. But, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure. you know, if, if the podcast is still going in 20 years, I'll be looking back thinking, fuck, or uh, I'm probably sure I'll be looking back think, thinking, fuck. Um, I'm saying it was better in my day, but oh well. Um, yeah, uh, sorry for the the massive ramble, Nick. Um, yeah, hope uh, hope all is well and you enjoy your summer off, much deserved. Take care and come on, you lions. Summer off, Lawrence. Summer off. Twenty years time, or twenty years still going. Bit serious. Um, yeah, ruthless is a good word, isn't it? Very good word. Um, my dad used to tell me of the ruthless ways of local Bermondsey gangsters back in the 60s. Um, you know, urban myth, I don't know, but many of the uh, concrete reinforcements of the uh, the Bricklayers Arms flyover apparently contained opponents of various local faces. Um, whether true or not, I, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, there we are. Um it certainly is the most ruthless thing I've known in my time at the Den. Can't really think of anything that, that compares with it. Very much James Berylson's decision. Um, who knows who took what views over the course of this strange, troubled season that we've just had and who was behind the decision to appoint Joe Edwards. So we don't really know any of that. Well, I doubt we ever will do. But I do agree that um, in football... Um, potential is everything, we, and it, it's it, it's a true Florence that you're saying there. We we do have a lot of potential at the club. It, ever since I've started going in the uh, early seventies, listeners, people have always told me how Mill was some kind of, um, if not a sleeping giant, how it had potential to be a much bigger club than than it is. Never realised in fifty years. Um, will it be realised now? And if it is realised, what do we turn into? Um, you know, I think you've only got to look at the salutary lessons of other clubs, West Ham being the most obvious example, where a club, whatever we all might think of them and their um, you know, uh, Bubbles Cockney kind of persona, was a local, um, hesitate to use the word community club, but it was of the area where it was based in in, um, in uh, East Ham. And now they're, they're very much part of the Premier League's... Um, Mint, you know, mince machine um, playing out of a solar stadium and, you know, all the rest of it. So um, maybe that's a price of Premier League success. Certainly James Berylson has spoken of his ambition to get into the Premier League in, in his most recent interviews in the, in the wake of the um, Night of the Long Knives. He mentioned the Premier League as, as, as a, um, a valid target. So... Um, and that will require certainly new money. Whether whether um, Neil Harris, um, given some resources, and playing his style of um, maximum ma- the old t- Hugh t- the Who T shirt, maximum R and B. We want my maximum Millwall football. Um, if that's played with the right personnel, can that achieve league success and therefore a shot at the big time? I don't know. I hope so. It has done nearly previously but it, we've always lacked for the money i can only presume as i said this to harry and i don't i don't know if i explained it correctly to harry i hope i'm explaining it correctly now i do not believe that you act this ruthlessly to take out three um major figures in your football club without having um very good replacements in mind because you're causing such a shock and the you know the, the trauma 
of, of losing three fairly well-known and established personalities. You're only going to do that to improve things, I, I believe. We should only do it to improve things. And uh, at the moment, we've got Steve Gallen. We, I, I don't know enough about him to say whether that's a good move or a bad move. I'm sure it's pretty good looking at his wiki page. Um, and we wait to see who the replacements at the at the top of the club will be, the chief exec and um, whatever they do with, with Billy's role, the, the director of operations. Um, if we can get the bird shit cleaned up, then I won't, uh, you know, I'll have a lot softer view of it, dear listeners. Anyway, big thank you, Lawrence, for the wide world of Millwall, Wolfhamstow to Chinatown to Chicago to uh, South East London. Let's have a listen now, alphabetically speaking now. Um, Simon Fay, F. Uh, good afternoon, Nick. Uh, Simon Fay, just um, calling in um, on the news that um, Steve Kavanagh and uh, Alex Aldrich have uh, left the building. Um, whether they left of their own accord or whether this is uh, our new chairman flexing his flexing his muscles and being a bit ruthless. Hey, need a ruthless chairman. Something that's been sorely lacking at Millwall over the last few years as Jimmy came in at the start of this season um, taking a season to actually have a look at the club see what's there and didn't like what he saw and has basically decided to um, get rid of them and get his own people in um, some people say the uh, appointment of uh, Kevin Gallen as uh, director of football is a bit underwhelming um, there was a post of there was a post on X and there was a post on X this morning um, actually um, pointing out the caliber of players that um, he actually managed to get in on loan for Cholton over the last few years um, one notable name in there is uh, Connor Gallagher um, it's nice to have an actual football man in the hot seat rather than a football manager man um, still time will tell but looks like this is a step in the right direction um, hopefully we can get some decent players in um, with the reports that um, whether this is true or not that um, Tottenham are willing if, if Tottenham do extend um, Tanganga's contract by 12 months they're willing to let him go for three million pound um i think that seeing as we bid three million for charlie cresswell i don't i, I can't see it within the realms of impossibility that we can make a bid for tanganga um but still time will tell um anyway um we'll see what happens um until the next bit of drama nick um come on you lines Big thank you, Simon. Yeah, drama, mate. It's always dramatic down the den, isn't it? Um, I saw that um, story about Tanganga and, and, and the deal being put together for £3 million. Pounds. I mean, I'm still slightly amazed that Millwall Football Club and the words £3 million are in the same sentence. But, um, you know, maybe, I don't know, this is all speculation, listeners, and uh, maybe that's why people tune into these kinds of shows. I don't know, to to hear speculation. Um but I can only imagine that there is a point and purpose behind this. This uh, I'm going to use the word decapitation at the top. I mean, clearly some people have um, you know views on some of the individuals, personalities, and all that kind of thing. Um, but I can only presume this has been done with a view to bringing in new blood, new resources, new money, new money, um, because that's the only way we're going to really seriously challenge at the top end of the table, in my opinion. So. Um, as, as Simon says there, I mean, time time will tell. But, um, yeah, um, it certainly is is ruthless, Simon, that's that's for sure. And it's something that we, we're not really used to at the den. I, I've said it before when I've been speaking on this show, um, and a few of us, I'm sure we all at times, have wished we were more of a ruthless club. You know, we, we hang on to players for too long. We want to get old players back constantly. We want to... You know, kind of get the band back together again. Uh, I'm sure there are people that would want Kelly Jacket back, and uh, you know, it's 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 that kind of um, it's a sentimentality that's in all of us. And I put my own hand up on this one, listeners. Um, you always want to see your old your old favourites carry on and achieve success. Um, 
the opposite to that is, uh, and the, the most successful football clubs are the, the the ones that kill their darlings, and um, you know it does require a certain cold blooded ruthlessness that is not naturally ours, despite our fearsome reputation as a as a fan base. We're very sentimental. So um, anyway, interesting summertime ahead, Simon. So big thank you for that reaction from Simon Fay. We're going to go now with um, alphabetically speaks. So have a listen to uh, John Rankin. Evening, Nick. I just wanted to send in a little voice note about the um, the uh, revelations today that uh, Kavanagh, Aldo, etc., and Billy Taylor um, have left the club or have departed the club. I'm not sure whether they were sacked or left by mutual consent. But one of the things which I think hasn't been talked about is the financial running of the club. Now, uh, Kavanagh was an accountant. Accountants aren't really businessmen. Uh, businessmen are more focused on sales and keeping the bottom line uh, profitable. Accountants keep accounts. And accountants are very, very good at analysis and telling you perhaps where you're losing money and where you're making money. But actually making money is an art. And that needs a businessman. And that's why I think to have a CEO as an accountant or an accountant as a CEO is fraught with danger. And one of the things which hasn't been spoken about is the fact that Millwall have been losing £10 million per year, year after year. Now, anyone who walks into an enterprise like that is going to sack the CEO. You you can forget the booing the knee and, you know, um, don't be a tosser and all this kind of stuff and things that Kavanagh has said to me on the telephone regarding his dislike of some sections of our um, of our supporter base, our fan base, as Neil Harris says. But at the end of the day, if you're the CEO of an organisation which is losing millions of pounds year on year and the trend is losing more money, you have got to go. And I think it's a very good thing for the club you can forget all the histrionics about West Ham this and West Ham that and whatever. I had some dealings with Steve Kavanagh over the Memorial Stones and I was very unimpressed, very unimpressed with the way that he spoke to me, spoke over me and the fact that he was um, an apologist for all the wrong reasons. The asset of Millwall is the supporters. If you genuinely believe that Millwall is unique, and I do, there's no other club like Millwall, then you need a CEO who can really understand that and harness the power of the fan base and the DNA and the heritage of Millwall. That's the crucial thing. Now, in business, there are things on the balance sheet which are hard to... Um, value, but which some companies will buy for a huge amount of money, other companies out. And these are things like brands, intellectual property rights and goodwill. Now, Millwall as a brand is unique. And what that means is Millwall should always win their home football games. And they do that because of the crowd. Now, I was listening to a a broadcast today about the 2012 Olympics. And we had a day in the 2012 Olympics. It was called a Super Saturday where we won 12 gold medals. And the rowers were talking about the immense power of the crowd. 30,000 supporters roaring them home. And, you know, human beings are not robots. If you've got 15,000, 17,000, 10,000 committed Millwall supporters willing you home, that is a huge, huge asset for the balance sheet and the bottom line. So, you know, I'm not surprised that Kavanagh went. It came as no surprise to me and it came as no surprise that Aldo went and no surprise that Billy Taylor went. And I'm full of optimism now for a bright new future. So thanks very much. Interesting stuff by John there. Um, yeah, I, 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 I don't want to get into personalities. I, I, 
I will be honest with listeners. I've, I've always liked Billy. I'll get, I'll get on well with him. I will call him a friend. Um, uh, Alex, I, I know from the past. He was once. Um, he was, used to be on the the House of Fun, and I'm not going to get into the, um, you know, the, uh, the, the 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 cartoon stuff that we've mentioned a few times. People wanted to dig him out. I've, I, I, I haven't seen him for a long while now, Alex. But um, I, I, he was fine for me. But anyway, I'm, I'm not going to leave that bit there. Um, as far as Steve Cavan's concerned, I, I think your stuff is is your take is interesting, John. I, I kind of agree with you. Um, an accountant is a very useful tool as as a profession, um, but you do need something with someone with a bit more vision to make money. And, and business is not just um, it's important to have your nuts and bolts correct. Of course, don't get me wrong. Um, no one can succeed if you're losing money. But um, that's actually what's been happening, as John said. Now that may be a price of championship football without. Um, the fan base um, or, or the numbers to, to actually support anything more. I've been really fascinated, listeners, absolutely fascinated this season because where I sit in Birdship Corners, I've always called it, um, as, you know, you see the kind of waves of, um, I've seen American fans, we've seen um, fans from Scandinavia, um, the continent, all sorts. And we, as we've mentioned a few times over, over these shows, to achieve 16,500 average gates at the den is something unheard of since the early 1950s. So something has transformed on that front. Now, why why it's taken this long to get get it transformed, maybe, I, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe that's part of the, the rankle for Jimmy Barrison. Why wasn't all this done before? Um, and, you know, who, who knows? I, I do agree with John that getting your home experience and your home form right is, is a major, major foundation stone to for Mill to succeed. Um, Neil Harris has grasped that, and look at the form since he's come back at, uh, at the Den. It is a, it remains a powerful weapon, um, and that was allowed to drift. So you know there may be many reasons as to why Steve Kavanagh has been um, axed in that way, and I do agree that um, you know the best accountants aren't always the easiest of people to talk to. <laughs> Oh dear, anyway, we'll leave it there. Big thank you, John. That was an interesting, interesting voice note message, mate. I appreciate it. Last one now, we're going to listen, alphabetically speaking, The Curse of Matt's Life. If we were a W, it's Matt Webb. Let's have a listen to Matt. Nick, hi, Matt Webb here. Um, I just thought I'd put my um, thoughts in today's news regarding the departures of some senior officials at the club. Um, Well, I think a couple of weeks back I mentioned... Uh, about what will the club do in the uh, close season? Where's the ambition? And I think we're seeing this, if I'm honest with you. I think um, James Berylson is now probably putting his stance firmly into this club and taking, with, with that, he's, he's obviously taking up some, taking away some roles that um, the likes of. Well, Mr. Kavanagh had and Mr. Aldridge had, as well as uh, Billy Taylor. Now, obviously, we don't know what has gone on in the boardroom, but that just that obviously rings bells to me to say that James Berylson wants to take us to another level. Um, he has a, a, a dream, he has a desire, and you know what? It, it, I, I always honestly thought that was always going to happen. Um, you know. It don't matter whether if it's your your you're taking over a, a role that your father has taken or, or or a family member. As a senior manager or an owner, you have your own dreams, you have your own ways, your own methods to run uh, an organisation. And like I said, I think we're now seeing it. Um, so this is now the James Berylson era at the club, um, appointing Steve Gallen. Um, his his uh, CV in terms of who he brought into Charlton speaks volumes, in my opinion. Uh, you just got to look at the likes he brought in was um, Conor Gallagher uh, when he was on was at Chelsea. Uh, Mav- I can't pronounce the fella's name, but Mavidi, who was is at Leicester. Um, another one is Rick, Rick Saki, say Rick Saki or whatever his name is at, at Palace, and he's a good good young lad. So he's got a bit of a decent track record, and I think that speaks volumes. Um, 
would would uh, Aldo, Aldo got those kind of players? <sighs> Don't know. Probably not. Steve Gallen, Gallen has been in the uh, been in the game, played it as well. So he's he's got probably a, a fast array of contacts, and that can only mean being positive news for uh, for the club. So I'm I'm happy with that. Uh, who comes in as CEO? Who knows? Um, but you know. I just listened to your your uh, recording with with Fizz and and you're right. I mean, as much as Cav had his downfalls, he has brought attend. He has like sort of spearheaded uh, a modern Millwall in terms of the business and marketing side of things. Maybe the new CEO can find out whether we can get any better beer, uh, but that's another story. But um, but no, you. I think you've got to take your hat off. But and there must have been a. a a, a, an enduring job for him to do but as you said did Kavanaugh have the same ambition as what James Barrelson has who knows um but yeah no I'm I'm very very happy uh, I'm very positive exactly what's going to happen um the only sort of gray areas what's going to happen are we gonna, is, is Bomber going to stay on um I'm I think he deserves it I think everyone's in agreement that he does deserve it um, but as I said, Jimmy Berylson may have his own ideas, methods, bringing in his guys that he feels is right for the club. Um, and, and, um, yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'm maybe Neil is part of it. So hopefully he gets the uh, transfer funds, uh, to strengthen team. You know, I think we all want some like Tanganga and Longman back at the club as soon as possible, but whether Steve Gallen can bring more players in of the Tanganga ilk. That's probably the best thing to, best question to ask. So, yeah, no, really, really, really good. Really positive, you know, sun's out and uh, some good positive news for the football club. Um, look forward to see what happens in the next couple of weeks, I think, because I think this is going to be a quite a quick turnaround, in my opinion. Um, I don't think it's going to drag, that's for certain. So... Let's look forward to it. So, come on, you Lions. Big thank you, Matt. Um, yeah, I don't think there's any time to waste at all. I mean, this is why I'm going to imagine, and it might be fantasy on my part, that Jimmy Berylson has an outcome in mind with personalities to come in to take the uh, the chief exec role and however they manage the, the operations office. So I don't really know what the difference is between the two in truth. Um Presumably he's got people in mind because time is ticking today as we record this show. It's the 11th of May. So we've got basically remainder of May, June. And then I think the pre-season friendlies begin from early July onwards. So, you know, training, I think, was um, the, the 26th of June, did I hear Neil Harris say in those videos, the uh, dressing room videos? Certainly by the 1st of May, the season is starting to come back to life. So it's actually not very long. It's, you know month and a half and you're really staring at the start of the 24-25 campaign a big campaign big new tv deal um a lot more live games more money to to um slosh around within the in the industry um i don't think we can afford much more change just to go on to neil harris's position matt um i'll be amazed absolutely amazed if neil harris's position comes under under uh, scrutiny because you're going to be talking about, um, you know, some fairly substantive changes at the top of the club. You want a little bit of stability. Um, if it is only just for the season that he's, he's spoken of repeatedly, next season only. Um, who knows? Who knows where this is going to take us? I suppose the other thing to say is that, um, you know, the departure of Alex Aldrich um, and replacement of Steve Gunn, who is, I think Simon said he's a football man, not a football manager game uh, man. Um, I suppose that's going to be an interesting, um, you know, an interesting contrast. Some of our best um, signings of, of in Mill history have been by proper football men, and I'm thinking of the likes of Bob Pearson, and I think Mick Harford worked with us for a while as well, didn't he? And you know, you need you need substantial personalities like that to really succeed and take us to the next level. Um, let's close it there. A big thank you to Matt for that that uh, voice note. Um, let's close it with the hope that this is an ambitious, ruthless but ambitious play by Jimmy Berylson. Um, we, we're all fans, we want the club to succeed and if that's what is the outcome out of this um, Night of the Long Knives, uh, St Valentine's Day massacre of 
of the great and the good at Millwall, then that's that's going to be um, a good outcome if we if we actually move upwards. Um, I still want to send my best wishes to each of the boys that have lost their their jobs, because that's never a pleasant experience. Um, there we are. And that's the end of this um, second emergency edition in two days. I'm not going to get much time out from the podcasting scene, listeners. But until the next edition of Akdong Millwall, whenever that may be, from me, Nick Hart, it's Arriva Dirty Millwall. Bye for now.